Hey, hey, happy Monday, guys. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you guys coming in here again tonight. Uh, thanks, replay viewers, for watching. We are going to finish my uh, travel art folio by Patty Young of Mod Kid. We are almost done. I haven't sewn it together yet, so we just have to sew our little elastic guys in and then sew the whole thing shut put some nice top stitching on and it's a done deal. So thanks for joining me. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, uh, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, where we just relax and craft and chit chat. Uh, so just a note uh, as we get started here, I am going to be out after today until, uh, the next Tuesday, so seven days. <laughs> so just to give you fair warning, fair warning now, I might pop in here and then uh, during the day, but our normal 9.30 time, I'm not gonna be uh, doing that again until uh, the week after tomorrow on Tuesday. So uh, that's that. Luckily uh, with this project, this timed out perfectly uh, since this is our last day uh, tonight it'll be our it's gonna be our last day of sewing it too so it, it worked out great so thanks again guys for joining me and I'm gonna flip you around let's get sewing let me know how your weekend was alrighty so I just kind of for fun put it together it's actually not assembled yet the front and back are still two separate pieces so remember we did the front with the uh, or the exterior, it's more like the exterior, with uh, the fusible fleece. We'll be using that again. And this had the stabilizer, the inside. So where we left off, we did all the colored pencils. You don't have the lines for the colors and the colored pencils sewn yet. Oh, otherwise caught up, yep. That's where we, we left off here. So you can see, uh, you can see all the little lines that we sewed in. This isn't a pencil, so it might not fit. Oh, it fits perfectly fine. So this is where different pens or pencils, what have you can go. And the last little bit for the inside was these little elastics. So we fold over the edges and we'll sew them down. And uh, just like that. And then we'll sew, we'll sew another one here. Oh, I gotta find it, here we go. Fold over the edges a half inch. Oh, thanks, Marion. Uh, yeah, so our trip, we're headed to Joanne Fabric Corporate, pitching our new items. So we'll see how that goes. And then when I come back, I'll share, uh, share it with you guys too. Ooh, I just realized that I have one of these crickets, perfect, or crickets, these grasshopper guys perfectly placed in the middle here on accident. I love that. It's gonna be kind of framed up by our little elastic guys here. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's read where this elastic should go. It's, uh, we fold over a half inch. Oh, and I didn't measure these again. Let's, let's first make sure that these are the right length. So these should be two four inch pieces. So you know what, let's, let's get the rotary cutter out and just double check, because I do not think I measured that. Ooh, so using a cutting board on my new, oh yes, yeah, we're too much here. I'm gonna cut both ends at the four, four inch mark. So this is a way I can do it. I just got this uh, extension, uh, extension table and I'm, it kind of, it kind of took away my cutting board space because I had my cutting board right next to my sewing machine. And so now I need an alternative. Luckily for this, I have this nice little spinny, spinny guy but um, four inches, right? Yep, two four inch pieces. But I don't know, for our big stuff, I'm not quite sure how I will cut that all up yet. But anyway, there we go, that's our four inches. That worked well though, just having the, uh, the rotating mat here. Oh, Patty's here again. So Patty is the designer of this project. And yeah, this is the last day today. I think we're gonna finish it up. 
which is just the right amount of time since I'm headed out of town. Oh, looks one side is kind of shiny and one is not so shiny. I'm putting the shiny sides out. All right, so we fold over the edge a half inch and I'm just going to estimate that. We're going to get the pins out today too, I think. All right, and then it should be one inch down from the top and uh, two and a half inches this way. So let's go one inch down and two and a half this way. So I don't know, should we go on the inside, vertically down from the top and from the right edge? So like right there, I would say, which is perfectly framing our little dude. Uh, and the other piece is six inches away from this. So I just wanna see what that looks like. Six inches, six inches in between would be like right here. Oh, is that right? Maybe we should go on the... Should we go on this side of it? Oh, fun! <laughs> That's fun, coming in right after your daughter's dance class. So I don't quite know what side of the two and a half inches to put the elastic on. I suppose it doesn't really matter all that much. I'm just kind of seeing how it would look cute in, in here. And uh, six inches away, we'll go... Oh, we could still go on the inside of that six inches. I think they're in there, that looks cute. Yeah, there we go, that's that's centered in there and it centers my little, my little cricket dude there. So let's go at that spot. All right, got my little, my pins, my little magnetic thing. If you do not, I mean, this is totally broken. I dropped it a few times and it's, you know, it's being held together by tape. But if you don't have a magnetic, um, pin holder, it's totally worth it. I can, without looking at it, just throw my pins at it and it'll, they'll just go right in place. And now they make them so they spread all the way apart, the, the tops of the pins, so you don't end up stabbing yourself. <laughs> all right, we're going right here. I'm just gonna get a pin in there. And while we're here, let's just fold over the bottom edge too. Again, I'm just estimating that half inch. I think I'm a little shy. So I'm not gonna stretch it at all. I'm just gonna leave it, um, you know, I'm not leaving it slack either. I'm just folding it, grabbing a pin and pinning it. Okay, there we go. And now we're actually also gonna be dividing this in half a few times. So, or not half, into thirds. So what is it now? Oh, perfect. We can go right on the inch mark. I kind of have it centered in here. So I'm just gonna kind of throw a pin there. I'm not going to draw a line on. I'm just gonna use the pin as my guide because we're gonna, we're gonna sew like right across there. I think I can manage visualizing just that one little bit once I uh, remove the pin. So these are just kind of markers. They're not anything else really to me. Like we don't need, I don't need pins to hold this down here. I just need it to um, to um, mark that for me. All right, so I'm still measuring an inch from the top and I'm going from like the outer point to the outer point here. So again, let's fold over about a half inch. I might be a little shy of a half inch, but I'm thinking it doesn't matter much. All right, let's pin that down. Out of here, guy. All right. So now here, I kind of want to, you know, make sure that we're close to being even. Uh, I'm going to use the base of my uh, pencil holder as a guide, even though that might not be all that even either, but visually our eye will want to make it even with that. So I'm just putting my ruler at the bottom of the fold on this guy, figuring out what this line is, and we're just going to fold it till it's right at that kind of mark. Hey Sherry, thanks everyone for joining me again today. Man, Today, I think they said it was like the hottest, 
hottest day of the year here and oh god it was sweltering and just super high humidity and everything uh, i went out to the garden to pick a whole pile of kale and zucchinis and uh, i think i was able to eat one cherry tomato was okay on there and uh that's a pretty bent pin let me try a different one and oh my god it was so hot i couldn't i couldn't stay out there very long there we go all right I'll use this pin to mark the thirds. There, does this look even? I think, uh, I think those bottoms are pretty good. Yeah, I think we're pretty good there. Let's measure our three inches, or our, you know, little inch marks in between here. We'll top stitch along each of these pin lines, basically. We'll top stitch on the top and then just go down the row, I think. And then that's it for the inside. Uh, after this, we will um, sew the whole thing together. And you know what? I'm just sticking to my top stitching thread. In theory, uh, I should be switching to my other thread to sew this together, but I think we'll be okay. I think it's holding itself together. All right. All right, get rid of the pins. All right, let's do this. I will start, uh, let's start on this side. I think I'm gonna do that thing where I just sew you know, we'll back tack on each side, but I'm gonna just jump up to the next row. I think that'll be the easiest way to do this again. All right, sewing time, zoop. Okay. And I'm, I'm, oop, gosh, this guy got all this bulk on top here now. Let's just fold it up a hair. There we go. So I'm gonna just put the presser foot down first. And then I'm gonna move the pin. I'm gonna use uh, my little stiletto to kind of hold things in place a little bit. I don't I don't think I've ever, actually, now that I think of it, I, I don't think I've ever sewn elastic before. Huh, that's interesting. So I don't really know how it's gonna react <laughs> right now. I can guess that it'll wanna stretch and move a lot, but I don't know, we'll see. It's not like I'm sewing a lot, so I don't know. Guessing I'm not learning too much about sewing elastic. <laughs> but we got that first one down. So yeah, now I'm gonna just go straight across. Again, I'm gonna back tack. I'm kind of grabbing the edge of it too, just uh, for a little extra sturdiness. There, like I'm going, I'm going like a half stitch over the edge. We're gonna get back, do one more. Uh, now nah, we're gonna go back up. There we go. So this we can put like pencils or pens or something into these little little areas here. Things that have more flex. Uh, Sherry, I watched it. Uh, I watched it over lunch today. <laughs> so yes, I did watch it, and I'm not gonna do any spoilers or anything. Right. So I'll say I watched it, but I probably am not gonna talk about it after that. And I I had to make sure that I watched it because. We're going out of town, so I didn't know if I'd be able to watch it uh, while we're out of town. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to want to watch TV while we're out of town. But we'll be going to my parents' house afterwards, and my dad likes to give away spoilers. So I'm like, oh, man, I got to read this. Or I got to read it. I got to watch this before I see my dad. <laughs> so anyway... I did watch it. I watched it this afternoon. All right, let's uh, snip these quick, but it's looking cute. I'm going to snip all these front guys. Man, this jumping, just jumping across uh, is working pretty swell. I know, I believe I said, <laughs> oh God, and this is embarrassing, and John laughed at me. But I believe I said, oh, snap, <laughs> at some point in it. And my husband uh, laughed at me from the other room. <laughs> uh, cut you fully out. Oh, you didn't have much fabric left, so I'm glad. Oh, good. Good, Carol. I'm glad, uh, glad that was helpful. Yeah, that's the part that always scares me is the cutting of it all. Just not knowing. Ooh, what's going on here? Where did this come from? 
just not knowing if I'm doing something right or if I'm going to have enough fabric and all that. So I always, I always kind of pre-plan a little bit more than I plan the rest of it. Like I have to visualize uh, how cutting it out would be. Like here we go, here's our cute little elastic. So this can be like for longer things. I suppose I could have put it a little closer, but I, I like them kind of this far apart. I like that it's framing this. I was thinking um, this would be great for like knitting needles or for like paint brushes or something. That's what I was actually thinking of. I thought this could be like a watercolor uh, travel portfolio. Like I have some watercolored pencils. I could put those in here and a few brushes to, could go up here. I think that's kind of my, my general plan for this. I don't know, when we get back from uh, vacation, I'll have to load it up with stuff and, and show you guys what I ended up using it for. Oh, and speaking of, if you guys have finished it or if you're finishing it tonight or finishing it whenever your travel art folio, uh, I'd love if you shared in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see what it looks like with all, all your supplies and everything in too. I'm curious what you guys are using it for. If you're going to use it for a uh, you know, for an art folio or a sewing folio or, or what? Kind of curious. I think mine's gonna be, like I said, a watercolor thing. So I had a pad of watercolor paper and I'm like, oh, awesome. I have this pad, this can go in here, but it doesn't fit. And it doesn't fit because watercolor paper or I guess a normal standard size, and I didn't realize this uh, for um, drawing or like watercolor paper is nine by 12. So that's not eight and a half by 11. <laughs> so I'll have to get like a, a neat legal pad or something and, and put it in here instead, like a normal sized thing would fit. It'd be good for taking notes or, I bet you can find a legal pad or you know, like a eight and a half by, 11 legal pad, not not legal size, but you know, like a legal pad. I bet you I can find an online version of that. That would be fun to sketch in and stuff. We'll see. All right, that's done. Oh, oh shoot. I thought I ran out of bobbin, but nope, I just didn't see it. There it is. All right, here's the other neat part about having a magnetic, uh, magnetic, pin holder. So all my pins are right there. I can just flip it around and suck them all up. And there we are. I didn't have to pick any of them up. <laughs> so that's always, always nice. I've had that thing for years and years and years. I should probably get an, a new one. Um, like I said, it is busted in half, but you know, it still works. It can be busted in half. That's what tape's for. The pins, on the other hand, I should remove a bunch of those. Most of my pins are all bent. I gotta just, I gotta go through all of them and throw away all the bent ones. There's nothing more annoying than trying to pin something and all your pins are bent. Ooh, it jumped kind of funny a few times here. Hopefully it stays together okay. Ooh, this one's a little weird and dirty too. I wonder if it got stuck in the machine a little bit. Hmm. Well, anyway, I think we're good. All right, next up is, those magnetic pin holders are a lifesaver life for you. No, for not getting it off the floor. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just like, you know, especially if you're sewing, Sewing for a long period of time uh, and you keep pulling pins out, you, like if you're chain piecing and you, you can just take the pins out and kind of throw it in that general direction and it'll it'll latch onto the, uh, the magnet. So that's awesome. All right, here we are. So let's see, what do I have around that would be good to put in here? I don't know, I think this is a little short. You could almost put, like if you did the, uh, things in a different area, you could do this. I think this is gonna be perfect for my paint brushes though. That's, that's what I'm shooting for here. So, okay, 
Interior is completely finished. Oh, Irene, thanks, my, my painted, my painted scissors. I, I'm attempting to try and learn, or just for fun, it's not really to learn, um, using this painting program on my, my iPad. <laughs> so I've been putzing with that lately. All right, this is the front. This is the right orientation. I wanted the uh, little uh, grasshoppers to be up that way. So, so they're going in the same direction as the inside. So, all right, right sides together though. Right sides together. There we go. <laughs> All right, so next up is we are going to sew this whole guy together in that half of an inch in. Ooh, this is gonna be big and bulky. I'm kind of wondering if I should switch to my uh, walking foot, but I think we'll attempt it with, with just this foot. So I'm gonna get the Wonder Clips out here. And we're just gonna go around this edge. So ultimately, we, we wanna turn it right side out at the top. Um, I think we'll do it kind of right, right in here. And I think the reason we are turning in right side out on the top side instead of the bottom side is because we don't have tons of layers. Like down, down here, we got all this bulk all over the place. Oh, one thing I did wanna do quick Remember, I, I sewed it kind of funny. There was kind of like a lot of weird bulk here. I'm gonna press it really quick. I'm gonna press it as downward as I can. And I'm hoping that when I sew it, I'll get the half inch kind of, I'll get all this bulk kind of stuck in that half inch. So let's, let's just do that quick. Got my little, my little travel iron out here again. So again, I'm just gonna kind of push all that bulk down. I don't know if that's the best idea. I should probably just take it out or, you know, I could just leave it and say who cares, but, or I could take it out with the seam ripper and redo it, but I'm just kind of curious more than anything if this is an alternative to, to seam ripping. Although I already crinked it funny. Again, I'm gonna have to figure out my setup a little here now that I have the, uh, the, um, extension table, I think our our view's a little messed up here. I'm gonna have to raise raise uh, this up a little bit, I think, my, my camera in general. So I'll play with that once I'm back from, from the trip to, I got a little fuzzle up here. I'm just going to snip. All right, let's do right sides together again. This side is maybe a little more slippery, so I'm gonna put put this side down. Oh, Carol, yes, I got the extension table. I got it. It came in on Friday. I think it came on in on Friday. Friday or Thursday? I think Friday. And so I, I'm just, this is the second time I'm using it. And uh, I've got to get used to it for sure, but dang, it, it it's nice so far. It is, it's nice to have all the surface here and be next to my machine. So my, my, pieces don't flop down like this next to my machine. I think it's going to help me uh, everything to line up better and stay flatter and, and all that. So I think uh, I think it's going to be a good deal, this extension table. Just for the videos, though, I'm going to have to figure out how to get up a little higher. I think, you know, now you guys can't see as much. And I got to figure out how to iron and cut now that I, I have this big thing here, but I love it. It is, um, it's, it's adjustable, the extension table, so you can actually use it for any, any sewing machine. So like if you're going to a retreat or, or a class or something, you can bring it, or if you have more than one machine. Or if your machine dies and you need a new one, or your second machine, you have to switch to that. You can use the same extension table for the whole thing. Yes, so Deborah, that's what I'm hoping for. That I'm gonna, Deborah says that I'm gonna love it once I start uh, quilting my, my uh, splendid sampler quilt, which I'm hoping to do 
just a hair when, when I get back into town here. So next up, our next project is going to be starting April, not April, geez, August, uh, August 7th. And that's the Jacqueline Steves, um, uh, I love home. Oh gosh, that's what it's called, right? I love home uh, block of the month. So there's four blocks there. And in conjunction with that project, I think I have it sitting here yet. Uh, we're going to do the stitch along of my craft a happy life embroidery kit because uh, the, the Jacqueline Steve's thing, that's not going to be constant. We'll finish the block and then we'll have to wait for the next month for the next block. I'm going to, Try and line up this top and then then I'll go back and do this side here. So while we're waiting for the next block, we will we're gonna do that little um little embroidery guy. And it it's actually not in my shop yet. I will be I will be having a little sale for it and get it in the shop. I I think I, I think I said on the 27th when I get back into town. So um be on the lookout for a sale. It'll be a couple day sale. Once I, I, I'll put it up in the shop and for a few days it'll be on sale. Uh, I think around the 27th. So then, then you'll have it on time for when we actually do the stitch along. So that's a quick, super quick, fun little project. Um, and you know, especially if you haven't embroidered or want to get back into embroidery, haven't done it in a while. This will just be an easy peasy thing. It'll be a couple nights and then we'll be done. And we'll go over how to do different stitches and all the basics that you need to know. And, and if you have any questions that you're nervous about, uh, you know, to get started with embroidery, we'll, we'll go over those as well. So just feel free to email me with questions or, or ask me. All right. I think we're pretty good. This backside is kind of a hair bigger, but I think, you know, with that half inch seam allowance, we're going to get this all in here. All right. So just as a reminder, cause I'm going to mess this up. First of all, I'm already messing it up. All right. This is the top right here. I'm going to put, let's put a double. So from here to here, I think that should probably be enough for us to flip it out. I don't think it says, um, Leave, leave about a, okay, leave about a five inch gap at the top for turning. So I'm going to put a double clip here as a reminder, don't go past there. And then just cause I'm curious what five inches is about. Okay. About right there. I'm going to put a double clip there as well. That's like my starting point. Otherwise I'll get talking and I'll end up sewing the whole thing uh, shut. And then that's, that won't be right. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna start here and then go around. First of all, I'm gonna get my iron out of the way so it doesn't fall on the floor. All right, I got these so I can, um, I can be putting um, my wonder clips back in there when I'm done. But here we go, that's our first area. Let's do it, ah! Okay, I am using my top stitching thread again, which is probably not a good idea. I, I could switch to the other stuff, but I think, I don't know, it's been okay so far. So again, we are um, doing a half inch seam allowance. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is I made sure that my handles were really out of the way. So I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to accidentally sew my handles all funny. And actually, now that I think of it, yeah, I don't want them out. I want them I want them out of the way so they're they're tucked onto the inside here all right my half inch mark was right there all right let's do it where do you get the small wonder clips oh i think you can get them from amazon i should have a link i know i have a link in my youtube video for it but uh they're they're still rather new i believe i haven't seen them many places either Ooh, I think this just, yeah, it, this just sucked the, my thread out of here, which makes me think I'm stuck somewhere. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta re-thread this quick. 
Maybe that's where some of my problems were. Oh, look at this. They have a little, there's like a little knot tied in my thread. Well, there we go. Glad we found that now. All right, so I'm just threading the machine here. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. They just tied the ends of this thread with like the next. Uh... Oh, wow. Now it's really tight, too. All right, guys, we got to do this again. Ah, hope machine stays going with me long enough to finish. That always kind of happens with uh, sewing machines and with with printers. Printers are the worst when you uh, need something printed immediately. Then that's when it then that's when it dies, or that's when you run out of toner or something. I don't know if you guys have dealt with that before. All right, let's get this in here. Oh man, I'm gonna just. I don't usually like uh, spitting on the ends, but this is a thick thread. I need that edge squished together. Oh, I almost have it. Okay. Dang it, those two threads there. This is that 12 weight thread, so it's a bit thicker. All right, there we go. Oh, but it's still stuck up here. All right, I think we got it now, guys. Come on, no whammies. All right, I think we're good. Get this guy over here. Yeah, so Bonnie, I think uh, <clears throat> Amazon's, <coughs> excuse me, Amazon's probably your best bet for those <coughs> right now. Sorry, guys. Get this guy to help me through a little here. So we're sewing through a whole pile of bulk now as well, but so far it's going real smooth. So I think it was smart putting that, uh, this side down, it's a little slippier, slipperier. So I'm sewing on that half inch mark and stopping a half inch from the edge here. Estimating it about right there. Yeah, so I, I fake painted on that app one of my little uh, stork scissors. And now I just want to paint like all things sewing. So I was thinking, oh man, it'd just be fun to paint spools of thread. And and uh, it'd be even fun to paint like wonder clips. Like put a pile, a stack of wonder clips somewhere and paint those. Like these little paintings, I know they're digital right now, but like little paintings that just, you know, a sewer would care about. <laughs> you know, no one else is going to know what a wonder clip is. But if I see a wonder clip, that would just make me happy. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm having fun uh, playing around with that. I got, um, for my birthday, I got one, uh, one of those smaller iPad Pros with the, with the pencil. And I've already used it for work-related things. It was meant for work-related stuff, but uh, I've been using it for 
just for fun to paint and draw on too, and it's been really, really great. Uh, nope, Jennifer, it's not a new machine. Uh, are you wondering why it's so nice and flat? I did get an extension table. So a new, oh, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I'll show you when we're done here. A new extension table, or not just a new one, but it, uh, an extension table period, since I didn't have one before. So not a new machine, but a, uh, it's functioning differently because I'm nice and flat here now. That's, that's welcome. I'm digging it so far for sure. Oh, Procreate is the name of the app. Like Pro and then Create. Uh, I got, I had it recommended. I have a friend who manages a whole bunch of artists and, um, and they use it all the time on the job for art stuff. And so I've been playing with it a little bit and, and I'm totally digging it so far. Hey, we're getting to the top again. So we're almost done uh, sewing this together. Hope I spelled her name right. Oh, Marion, I think I missed something. Oh, this is why we do a half seam allowance on the project because when you stitch all these little pockets, handles, everything, yeah, they get distorted and shrink. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, if you didn't read that, what, what Patty said there, uh, again, Patty's the designer of this project. Uh, she does the, the big half inch, you know, because usually in like quilt land, we do a quarter inch seam allowance. I know like in clothing sewing land, uh, a lot of times it's a bigger seam allowance, but quilting, it's usually that quarter inch. And uh, the reason the half inch is used here is because we did sew a lot. There's a lot um, a lot going um, in different directions and all this. So things are getting, every time you sew, it kind of pulls in on, on stuff. So there's distortion. Like this isn't a perfectly, perfectly cut piece like it was at the beginning, you know, in theory. Uh, so the half inch, we squeeze everything in there. And, you know, even if we make some mistakes here and there, uh, if things get pulled and moved around, they'll get uh, sucked in by this, this half inch. Where to get, oh, where to get the mini wonder clips. Oh, do you know someone that, that sells them? That's not Amazon? I, I missed that. They're, they're handy though. The nice thing about the, the little ones, do I have a big one here too? Yeah, so here's the, uh, the normal size ones. There we go. Uh, here's the size difference between, between them. So they're much skinnier and they have the tapered point. So you can sew longer uh, without removing them. They're really great. And they're just as strong. They're, they're super strong. It even has some, uh, some markings. I don't know if you guys can see it really up close. Some uh, markings for uh, like a quarter inch. I think it might actually be in millimeters and stuff. So I don't know uh, quite what the markings are. But yeah, they're... They're nice. I got my big ones still. They actually make very big wonder clips too, uh, for like binding a quilt. I don't have those, but I think they'd be fun to try too. All right, my five inches probably actually ends about here. This is just more my visual reminder. So I'm gonna go about to there. Back tack that. All right, we gotta flip this guy out inside out and then uh, I still want to top stitch it. I want to finish this whole guy tonight yet, but we're around. So next up, we just need to clip, clip the corners. And because the corners are so thick, I think I'm gonna bring the big guns out as far as the scissors. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, let's get rid of these little threads here so they're not annoying us. All right, we need to clip the corners, and this is the same reason why um, why we clip the curves, because when we turn this right side out, all this bulk needs to go somewhere. And, you know, right side out, it's gonna be even more, it's gonna be squished like that. So to counteract that, we're gonna cut a diagonal. We're not gonna clip the corner, but we're gonna get real close there. So just just like that. And I'm gonna do that on, on all the edges, all the, all the corners. 
yeah, definitely want to use my, my nicer cuts like butter scissors uh, versus my little embroidery scissors. This would be a lot to go through for that. All right, let's turn this right side out and see, see how it looks. Well, I do like that I can just throw my tools underneath here and they're out of my way. Okay, here is, this is always a little bit of a challenge, but here's our little thing. I'm gonna just stick my whole arm in there and grab, grab that other end and try and start pulling it out. I have kind of a corner here. So I did, I did back tack on either side. So I think I can be a little aggressive with this and it won't fall out on me. So that's, that's good. Get this side going too. And then we'll have to poke out the corners and get this as flat as we can. Um, maybe we'll have to, we'll probably have to press it a little bit and then we're gonna top stitch. So just like how we did all the pockets, we will top stitch around. That'll just flatten the whole thing out here. Let's see, you guys can probably see me do it better this way. Um, but that will flatten the whole thing out, which is what we want. So it doesn't look like a big bubble. Oh, look at it, it's so cute. Yeah, we'll have to pop these corners out of here. Let's just keep going on this side. This guy goes like that. So fun. All right, I'm gonna stick my whole arm in here again now to just really try and poke out the corners. And again, I'll probably get a little pin and try and poke these out too. But, uh, you know, and I'll also try and really kind of poke on the seam to get it start to think that, hey, I'm gonna press you right there. So here I'm, I'm pushing out that seam, going down the edge here. So it's not like a, it's not all sunk in, it's pushed out. All right, here's a corner. Oh, I'm so excited about this project. It's so cute. I can't wait to load it up with uh, art supplies and stuff. Yeah, I have a whole, whole my, my watercolor stuff is kind of all over the place and I don't do it very often and I'd like to do it more. And I think by getting it in this thing, so it's just kind of grab and go, I think, I think that'll do the trick. So, all right, I am not going to sew this shut. What I'm gonna do is when we top stitch it, I'm gonna fold it over. You know what, I think I'm gonna wonder clip all around the edge here. I think that would, I think that's gonna help me keep a nice edge. I might not even iron. I think I'm gonna just wonder clip, wonder clip around the edge just so that like, you know, one isn't folded, you know, so the seam's right, right on the edge basically. So it's pushed down on the edge. I'm gonna wonder clip all that. But when I get to this part, I'm not sewing it shut now. I will sew it shut when we top stitch. So I'll wonder clip it shut, this opening. And then when we top stitch, that's all I'm gonna do. It'll be a little open. I mean, I could hand stitch it shut maybe, but I don't think anyone's gonna even notice that that was the opening once we're done. So that's that'll be neat. So I, I, I think I'll pick out the corners quick, but I don't think I'm gonna press it at all. I think I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to wonder clip it flat because it's kind of a lot of stuff. I don't know, um, pressing is probably not gonna do much. So I'm gently kind of poking my corners out again. I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do this aggressively because I don't wanna start accidentally pulling the fabric apart. Oh, you top stitched the open and close. Yeah, I don't, I just, I don't think anyone notices that there's that, there's like a little, there's a five inch area where it is a little, like there's an eighth inch flappy area. 
Uh, no one's gonna ever know that, and it's gonna be perfectly solidly sewn shut, so. I mean, you know, if you're going into some crazy quilt competition that's judged on all, all technical merit, then maybe you'd hand, hand tack it shut on top of it, but meh, that sounds crazy. All right, really working on these points. They should be pretty nice because we did we did clip them, so all that bulk is gone, so we shouldn't have it a curve. So there we go. That's that's a good point. So once we get the points, I got two more to go. Then I think I'm gonna wonder clip all this because as I wonder clip, I can go around and I can kind of pull out the seam a little bit more, kind of shape this guy a little bit more. So yeah, I think that's the plan. I will do these other two corners then go around and wonder clip. It's another extra step, but I think it'll be good. All right, here, we'll have to pull this guy out of the way and then top stitch there, because we don't, we don't want to accidentally top stitch. We don't want to get the flap in here. We want the flap to be, to be out. And actually, so we want the flap to be outward, but we want the handles to be inward, so we're gonna have to watch our handles which makes me think, maybe I'll flip it around to, uh, to sew. Yeah, I am gonna flip it around because I want the top stitching to be on the outside. Yeah, so we don't wanna get the handles stuck and we don't wanna get that flap stuck in our, in our sewing. All right, this is the last little corner. Actually, that looks pretty dang good. All right. I'm gonna flip this around. Oh, look at that green, it is so pretty. All right, I'm gonna go around, I'll just start here. Let's snip this away, that's annoying. I'm sure I'll have like little fuzzles like this that I'll have to snip later. But you know, now you could just start sewing, but again, I think getting the wonder clips out is gonna be good because look, there's so much bulk at once, the seam wants to pull itself inward again. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of pull it out a hair with my, with my pin, and we're just gonna clip it in place there. Could you use uh, the heavy thread in the bobbin? So I have tried that before. Maybe other machines can do that, Bonnie, but my, my machine cannot handle um, thicker thread in the bobbin. It, freaks out. So, so nope, I'm, I'm only using the top stitch thread on, on the top. But yeah, it would be nice to do that on the bottom. I think I tried that for a quilt and it just ended up being all crazy. You scare me, I scare you when I don't press. Well, with this, I'm not sure I'm gaining much by, by pressing. You know what? I, I I'm putting in probably more wonder clips than I need to. Because if I press it now, I'm gonna just be pressing these uh, these seams kind of inward, and I I want them as outward as I can. So this is square in general. So I'm just kind of pulling them out and throwing a wonder clip there. I don't think I think we might get into trouble if we if we press it. I don't know. Have a thinner weight orange. Oh, I could do that. A thinner weight orange for the bobbin. I don't have anything like that though. All our other top stitch stuff, like, you know, this is what we did for the, the um, you know, it's the orange on the outside and that gray. The gray actually kind of matches this little blue. So it's not gonna be horrendous. It's not gonna be so far out there. Whoa, flying, flying a wonder clip. All right, I am totally over wonder clipping, but that's what happens when it gets late. I get into perfection mode a little bit more. I like, uh, but I think it's gonna help popping out these little edges. Now this is a lot to sew through. This will be the most, the, the thickest that, uh, oh, it didn't help you, Marjorie, at this point, the, the ironing. Yeah, this is gonna be at the thickest that we're ever gonna sew through because now we've doubled the seam allowance of thickness in there. I mean, it, it's noticeably fat, like my Wonder Clips just, you know, I can just squeeze them around it. 
So yes, this is taking a little time doing this, but I think uh, I think it's going to be worth it. And yeah, pressing at this point, I'm not. I think you'll just uh, you'll squish your your seams and even more. And right now I'm I'm pulling them up out. All right. We are not done with the top yet, but we're getting there. This is actually looking pretty decent here. Just put one at the end. Look how cute that green fabric is. All right, and I think, yeah, that's probably good enough. I don't, I don't need it anymore. All right, here, we don't actually need it as much because I can pull on this handle, or not the handle, this uh, flap to kind of pull it out. So I'm not gonna bother with that side at all. So that's helpful. Yeah, I don't need it at all. It's all popped out. So this is where we need to watch our sewing. We'll sew here we, and get our handle out of the way. We don't want to accidentally sew the handle in. We want to put that out of the way and then this guy's got to go out of the way over here. If we accidentally sew that in, then our flap will be shorter and it'll be a weird. So we got to have this out to the side. All right, let's do this bottom. Oh, and we're approaching the opening here as well. So we will we'll pin, we'll wonder clip that shut, but let's pull this little edge out first. Ooh, I thought I was gonna fling that one too. All right, now I'm gonna fold in that bottom about that half of an inch and the top a half of an inch. I'm just gonna kind of shimmy them so they look the same as the rest of it. So let's see, let's get this seam even right here. You know what, I might put a little double, double pin here again, or double, uh, double wonder clip as a reminder, hey, this is where you gotta start sewing this seam shut. I think it's just a good visual, visual reminder. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna maybe pull this side shut too. And then I will go through the middle and, and even it out. So I'm just, again, putting my double reminder here. And I feel really clumsy with these pins tonight. All right, I'm gonna stand up and get above it. So now I'm just, again, shimmying both these seams until they both look like they're in line with, with like this, this whole uh, edge here. Like this feels like it can go in a little bit more. Oops, sorry guys, smacked ya. So I'm just kind of, kind of little mini kitty scratches. Ooh, that's looking good. I'm gonna pin that right there. Then we'll keep going down. Mm, this is like a kitty scratch in a hair, it looks like. Ah, that looks pretty decent. I think we need two pins in here though. It's a little bulky right there. This right here, I wanna fold in a little bit. Okay, I think, I think we got a good closed edge there. So let's, uh, let's finish going down the rest of this edge, just popping the seam out. It's actually looking pretty good. And that might be because there's, we're at the bottom area now. Oh no, we're at the top. I was, I was thinking we were at the bottom and maybe the stuff on the inside was helping. I'm almost done, Melanie. That is true. So uh, yeah, if you guys are coming in, in late tonight, I, I am not gonna be here for the rest of the week and I won't be, I won't be doing a live stream again until uh, Tuesday of next week. So I will be on the road for the next few days uh, and at my, my parents over the weekend and at the weekend, weekend I don't usually do a scope or a, a Facebook Live anymore. So I won't be back till Tuesday evening here so uh, uh, our next project is the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home uh, um, Block of the Month. 
there are four total, four blocks. And uh, so we'll be starting that on, uh, on August 7th. And uh, in the meantime, and on the 27th, we'll be doing that sale for the, the Craft a Happy Life embroidery. We'll be doing that in conjunction with the Jacqueline Steves project because the Jacqueline Steves one, that's gonna, um, that's going to, uh, we're gonna get the first block of the month done and then we gotta wait for the rest of the month, right? Before we get the next one. So in the meantime, we will be stitching on the Craft a Happy Life embroidery. And it's not listed yet. It will, I will be putting that up when I get back and having a sale on it. So keep your eyes open for that and I'll for sure let you know uh, when, when it's live. It'll just be a couple days, the sale. And uh, in the meantime, while we wait for the August 7th project, I got a splendid sampler quilt to quilt. <laughs> so I thought maybe maybe I try and get caught up on uh, that a little bit more. I know a lot of you might be uh, might be working on the splendid sampler. It's in that's in the second time around. And uh, I know some of you were interested in how I was gonna quilt it, so I thought maybe we'd spend some time on that. All right, I'm ready to sew. Let's just start right here. I got the whole thing wonder clipped, but look how. I can show you, uh, look how flat it is now. I did put a lot of wonder clips in, but look, I got a nice, nice edge all the way around. Actually right here, I might even pop it out. I'm getting really picky now. So it's not, I don't want it to squeeze in because all these, all these edges, actually I'm not, I already put the cover on my wonder clips, but all these edges want to pull in kind of like a pillow. So uh, yeah, oh, oh yes, I will. Um, I will definitely, I, I definitely cherish every time I get to go home and, and see my parents for sure. I'll give them a hug from everyone. <laughs> but yes, and uh, my mom does a bunch of quilting and stuff with me, which is, which is awesome. And we'll just hang out this time, I think. But yes, I try and get there whenever, whenever I can. All right, we're doing that cute top stitching. And now I'm telling you, putting these wonder clips all the way around, it's really, it's already, I've sewn like not even an inch yet. And I can tell it's going to help me because all of these seams are poofed out to the edge they're not pulling in like otherwise I'd have to be like picking this out as we go and I'd be worried about how straight it is I know it, it's fine right as is and you know it's really thick here now but um Sheen's feeling good it doesn't feel like anything is uh going oh you only use them when binding your quilts the one clips. oh yes uh Patricia this is a uh... Uh, you know, I didn't start using Wonder Clips until the Splendid Sampler, and man, I rarely use pins anymore, unless, like, you know, with the elastic, I'm kind of on the inside. Oh, I wish you thought of using the Wonder Clips ages ago. Yeah, I, I mean, since I got them, I'm like, dang, I can use these for everything, so I kind of have. <laughs> you know, I, I use them to clip when I'm when I'm numbering rows in my quilt and everything, I use them to clip pieces of paper. They're like my little paper clips then, and I don't know, they're really great. And they just slide right off with a pin. Sometimes you're pushing things around a little bit funny and not with not with the wonder clips. So definitely a fan now, but like I said, I'm I'm just just started using them on the splendid sampler. But dang, that splendid sampler, that was an education and a half in, in uh, sewing for me. So, I mean, I, I got a whole pile of gadgets when I was working on that project that have improved, proved life of uh, quilting quite a bit. I think one of the big things, one of my favorite things that I got on the splendid sampler, and it, they're just so simple. They're those... Uh, rubber oh gosh I can never ever remember the name true grips the true grip stickers that go on the bottom of your ruler 
like these little rubber stickers, so then your ruler doesn't move around at all when you cut, and a whole oh man, did that ever change my outlook on cutting? Because it would always slip around, or I'd get nervous that I'd slip on my ruler, and it it would uh, go crazy places. So uh, wonder clips and uh, those true grips, those have been great. They were great to clip important papers to your calendar. Nice, Bonnie. They can be used for everything. And you know what's so nice about them is that they're really strong. All right, okay, I'm a little nervous coming to this corner. There's a lot of bulk. One more stitch. There we are. Man, my presser foot hardly comes up at all when I press, but it does. Look, it's looking great, but see how it just flattens everything out? Uh, that's, you know, that's why, um, you know, now we could hit it with an iron, but you don't really need to anymore. This is what scrunches it together. This is what flattens it out, keeps it from not being round. You got your first set of Wonder Clips about a year ago, and I was like, dang, where have you spent all my life? Exactly, that's how I'm, like, with them, with them now, the Wonder Clips. They're awesome. And they actually come in a really great case, too. The case... Uh, stays shut like it doesn't feel like it's gonna pop open or anything even though I, I've replaced mine now I, I have mine in this little um, Ikea thing that has a magnet on the back so I can stick it on my little wall all right right now I am moving my uh, I'm not sewing through my my handle moving the handle out of the way and I'm also here's my flap I'm I'm putting it here I'm only sewing sewing the the top and the or the inside and the outside together and I'm actually, I'm pulling on my, my uh, flap a little bit because I didn't wonder clip this. So I need to kind of pull it. Oh yes, they're much prettier than binder clips. I'd be scared about using binder clips. They're, they seem kind of aggressive, like the binder clips might leave marks or something. Maybe not, who knows. I like them. <laughs> like I was talking about earlier, I, I want to paint them still. I think it'd be a cute painting, a pile of wonder clips. All right, here we go. We got that side done. Look, now this is all nice and flat too. Uh, got a good corner going. It's looking awesome. Make sure that's down. Otherwise we'll have a nest on the back. here oh we're approaching there's my double clip that means we're approaching the uh, opening which you know will treat just exactly the same as we are now but I'm gonna just pay extra oh it just started raining outside I'm gonna pay extra attention to it so it doesn't flip open on me which it shouldn't but you know I'm just being mindful of it all right, so we're actively, we're sewing shut the hole right now, which is, which is awesome. So we didn't have to do anything special for, for that, that opening. It's getting sewn shut right now and no one's ever gonna know that that's the spot where we did it. All right, one more and then we're to our double pin or double clip. Still used to saying, calling them pins. All right, and we are officially closed. There is no opening on it anymore. All right, we are almost done. We're almost done with this edge, just a third left, and then we have uh, that one short edge to do yet. Ooh, come on, it's not not moving as well anymore. Oh, I think I'm on. What's underneath us right now? Oh yeah, I caught the the, the clap. The clap. <laughs> I read something, what well, you guys said, but the flap, the flap caught on the edge. That's what I was trying to say. The flap caught, not the clap, but the flap caught on the edge of my table here and uh, my uh, my stuff wasn't moving forward anymore. I'm like, what's going on? The, that flap caught the edge. You're totally buying the mini wonder clips. Yeah, the mini wonder clips are awesome. 
Yeah, I think I got mine on Amazon. I don't remember if I put a link in in this or or not. I might have did that last time. I don't know if you saw any of my my YouTube ones have the link. I think for the Wonder Clips in. If you want to get there quick, but yeah, and they come in different colors too. I got the ones that are all multicolored because why not? But yeah, that's the only place I've seen them. I mean, I haven't like looked a lot, but. Oh, mini jaws, that's a good way. I mean, they are, they are, they're, um, they're pretty dang strong. Mini jaws, I like that. But yeah, I haven't found them anywhere else. I'm sure they're out there. Okay, this is our last edge. Oh, I guess we have a tiny little bit of edge on the other side yet. Okay, I'm recommending again wonder clipping or at least pinning this edge because it's going to be so much more square by popping out the seam all the way around. Use two pins just like you did with the wonder clips. Oh, so you know where to start and end. Oh yeah, love the gadgets. So Patricia, I was so not a gadget person before I started the Splendid Sampler. And I'm, I'm still not, I still, I mean now I'm using a lot of gadgets, but I'm still of the mindset that you don't, you don't need the gadgets to get started. You know, I think a lot of people get intimidated by quilting and sewing and then never start because they don't have, they don't think they have all the stuff for it and you don't need anything. Really, I mean, you don't even need a sewing machine to sew, right? Uh, you'll still be able to, you know, hand sew things together with just a needle and thread, right? But after uh, working on the Splendid Sampler, you know, I indulged with the, uh, the little tools, fancy tools here and there, and man, they do make life easier, that's for sure. They're not needed, but they're, they're fun. They make your quilty life just that much nicer. I think I can go one, uh, I'm too scared to go one more. Yeah, I think I gotta go one more stitch. Can I do it? All right, we're good. Thought I was gonna go off the edge a little, but I think we're still fine. Yeah, and these wonder clips are one of those things. Not needed, but sure are fun. If it takes my brain and energy off of other little parts of the process, then it's worth it to me. All right, we're approaching the end again, so I'm gonna just uh, back tack that again. And that just means going, um, you know, back a couple stitches, reverse, and then forward again. Again, that's kind of like tying a knot so it won't fall apart. And there we are. And I love this orange top stitching. How Fun. So again, this top stitching is uh, 12 weight Aurifil thread. It doesn't have to be Aurifil, but it's the 12 weight, which is thicker. And then since uh, I can't put that in my bobbin, my, my bobbin will freak out. I just have a uh, 50 weight, which is nice and thin underneath. I mean, they're noticeably different thicknesses. See, that's just super fat. But okay, here we are. Let's check it out. Yeah, a guy has his tools and, and we have our gadgets. Oh, I love the top stitching. So I am not going to iron this. I don't think it is needed whatsoever. Oh, let's fold it up. Oh, look how cute. I love how it all shrinks too because, you know, we've lost an inch. We've lost the, the uh, half inch on the top and bottom. Uh-oh. Guys, I think I sewed my flap into it. <laughs> Look, I did. Look, I sewed my flap into it just a hair. Oh, I might be able to pick that out. Well, anyway, maybe that is actually better. Maybe, uh, maybe now I things won't fall out. <laughs> well, there you go. Had to make one funny mistake uh, during this time. Actually, I think I like it like that now that I'm looking at it because I, I want to put um, some watercolor stuff in here and uh, this might actually keep some of the things from possibly falling out of here. Okay, super mistake, but I totally, I'm, I'm claiming it as not a mistake anymore. I like it. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's fold it up. Oh, I'm caught on, caught on the edge here again. All right, got to test it out now. 
fold it up and fold it up and you guys hear the rain oh my god look how cute it is it just shrunk up to like the perfect little size cute okay it is the cutest thing ever i love it so much here let's get a little higher i'll show you in person too but look there we go here's the back where you can see the pretty fabric all nice uh, what I like is that if I put it on the shelf like this or like this, my, my crickets or the grasshoppers are upwards. And here, I'll, I'll open it up so you guys can see quick again. That guy comes off and it rolls out. Get the pencils. And here's where I sewed it in. <laughs> All right, guys. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Patty, for letting us work on, on your uh, project. This has been so fun. I got to put it together again. And I'll show you guys uh, in, you know, when I turn it back to me, too, so you can see the size and stuff. But, oh, that, that fits on the Velcro just perfect there. Oh, my God. It's the cutest thing ever. So there we are. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Ooh. Hello. So here we are. Look, it turned out like the perfect little size. It is so darling. I love it so much. Oh, I, oh, I will for sure take it to show my mom. <laughs> so, all right, guys, uh, this will, oh, look at the cute edge too. Oh, and then it, there you can see part of the color popping out of there. I love it. It is a, it's a great size. So here, you know, I, I hope you can kind of tell the size of it. But yes, so if you guys are making this, be sure to share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Uh, I'd love, love, love to see how yours turned out. I just can't stand these fabrics. They're so dang cute together. The little, little, uh, I'm going to keep calling them crickets. I know they're grasshoppers, but it reminds me of the crickets at my parents' house. Uh, that always chirp for us when I film there. So there are little, our little uh, Wisconsin crickets. How about that? <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll get this up on YouTube tonight yet. And again, I won't be back in until uh, tomorrow or uh, the week after tomorrow. So on Tuesday. But yes, and if you, um, that's plenty of time a week if you wanted to try making one of these on your own. Again, the PDF is available. Uh, there's a link here for the PDF pattern for the travel art folio. And yeah, if you want to stitch one up while I'm gone, keep posting them in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. And I'm going to pop in there every once in a while uh, to, to peek while we're on vacation. But thanks, thanks so much for the safe travel wishes. And I will say hi to my mom and dad for all of you <laughs> and give them a big hug. And uh, I will catch you guys on Tuesday next week. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. Have a great night.